In this video, we're going to cover a concept called f-stop. In brief, f-stop is simply one of the settings on your camera that uses a set of numbers to determine how much light is coming into the camera through the lens. If we look at a top-down view of our camera here, we have a lens up here at the front, we have our film or sensor at the back, and in between these two is a mechanism called the iris. The iris is basically a circular shield with a hole in the center that can open or close depending on how much light you want to let in the camera. The hole itself is called the aperture. The mechanism that's making this hole is called the iris. This is good to know because most of the time you'll see the aperture referred to, but sometimes you'll see the iris referred to. And it's just good to know that we're usually we're just interested in the aperture. So the effect of this is that with an aperture open wide, you're going to be letting in a lot of light into your camera through the lens. But with a small aperture, you're not really going to be letting in that much light. The f-stop numbers are basically a scale of numbers for talking about how much light we want coming into the camera with regard to how wide open the aperture needs to be to get that amount of light. With the f-stop scale of numbers, every major point on the scale either doubles or halves the amount of light, depending if you're going up or down the scale. So if we have these different aperture sizes here, every time we go to the next aperture size, we're doubling the amount of light. But we need to pay attention to one interesting thing here about the size of the aperture. Let's use this one for example and say it's got a diameter of 20 millimeters. That means the area of the aperture is 314 millimeters. This is important because basically the area of the aperture is saying this is how much light we're letting through this aperture. So if we go up to the next size aperture in the f-stop scale, we're doubling the area of the aperture. Which means we're saying we're letting in double the amount of light into this aperture. But what about the diameter of the aperture? Is that doubling too? No, it turns out in order to double the area of the aperture, we need to multiply the diameter of the aperture by the square root of 2. This will end up doubling the area of the aperture. So then if we want to go up to the next aperture size, we're going to double the area again. Because this is going to let in, again, double the amount of light as the previous aperture size. So again, in order to double the area, we're going to need to take the diameter size and multiply it by the square root of 2. And now we're going to have a diameter of 40 millimeters. So this number, the square root of 2, this is an important number because every time we multiply the diameter by the square root of 2, we're doubling the amount of light. Just the same if we're to do the opposite and divide the diameter by the square root of 2, we're going to get half the amount of light. So remember what I mentioned before that the f-stop scale is a way to talk about the amount of light coming in with regard to the size of the aperture. So why don't we just make a scale of aperture sizes and say, oh, well, if you want to let in, you know, a certain amount of light, just open up your aperture to 40 millimeters. Well, the reason is that not all lenses are the same. And this same aperture size is going to let in different amounts of light depending on the lens you use. I'll show you why. So here we have two different setups with two different amounts of light we want to get. Here on the top, we're getting a lot of light. And here on the bottom, we're getting not so much light. In the top here, in order to get this amount of light, we would need an aperture size of, say, 20 millimeters. And here on the bottom, in order to get this amount of light, we would need an aperture size of, say, 10 millimeters. In both of these examples, the lens is the same distance from the film. This distance is called the focal length. And in this example, the focal length is 40 millimeters. OK, that's fine. But what if we have a lens way out here, say at a focal length of 80 millimeters? Well now, in the top example, we're going to need an aperture size of, say, 40 millimeters in order to let in this same amount of light. And in the bottom example, we're going to now need an aperture size of, say, 20 millimeters in order to let in this amount of light. Do you see the problem yet? The size of the aperture is not the only thing determining how much light is coming in. For example, here's two same size apertures letting in different amounts of light. And here's two different size apertures letting in the same amount of light. 
So in order to really think about the amount of light coming in, we also need to think about the focal length as well as the size of the aperture. So if we're going to talk about the amount of light coming in by considering both the diameter and the focal length, let's look at how those would relate. So in the top example here when we had our 40 millimeter focal length and our 20 millimeter aperture, that was letting in the same amount of light as when we had our 80 millimeter focal length and our 40 millimeter aperture. These are letting in the same amount of light. Just as down here on the bottom example when we had a 40 millimeter focal length and a 10 millimeter aperture, that was letting in the same amount of light as an 80 millimeter focal length with a 20 millimeter aperture. Calculating these down, we see that in the top example, these are both equal to 2, and in the bottom example, these are both equal to 4. These don't mean anything in terms of units, like millimeters or units of light or anything like that. All they really represent is the proportion of focal length and aperture diameter that will let in a certain amount of light. That's it. That's all it represents. But this is so important because it means that no matter what lens setup you're using, if the focal length and the diameter come out to this proportion, then you're going to be letting in this amount of light. And this number here, that's the number used for the f-stop scale. This is why you can see you can have different sized lenses and know that despite being different size or shape, as long as you set it to the same f-stop number, you'll be getting the same amount of light. So here we have these three numbers here. We have the focal length, we have the diameter, and we have you know x representing the proportion between these two, our f-stop number. How would we put these into a formula that we can use to see how they're all related? So in this example here, we would have our focal length divided by diameter is going to equal our x number, our f-stop number. Well remember, f-stop's all about being able to know how wide open to make the diameter, so we need a formula that will tell us the diameter. So let's rewrite this formula like this. f divided by x equals d. Now if you remember your high school math, we can swap these two and these equations will still mean the same thing. They'll still be balanced out with each other. So now we can say at this focal length, if we want this amount of light, we need a diameter of this size. And this side of the equation here might look a little bit familiar because the f-stop or f-number you may often see written like this, f slash x, or with an actual number, f slash 2, just as an example. So now we're mostly there. We know what the f-stop number is and what it represents, the amount of light coming in, but we haven't learned how the f-stop scale works and why it uses such specific numbers. In order to understand how the f-stop scale works, we need to go back to the scale of apertures we were working with before. So remember these aperture sizes we were dealing with. Also remember that these aperture sizes are very specific. They're specific because we multiplied or divided the diameter by the square root of 2, depending on whether we want to double the amount of light or half the amount of light. So let's put our f-stop formula here and see how these relate. So we have our focal length divided by our x number or f-stop number gives us a diameter. So remember, if we're multiplying or dividing the diameter every time we go up or down the f-stop scale, in order to keep this equation balanced, we're going to need to do the opposite to x in this equation. So for example, let's say we're going to double the amount of light. Well, in order to do that, we need to multiply the diameter by the square root of 2. Now in order to keep this equation balanced, we're going to need to divide the f-stop number by the square root of 2. Let's plug in a real example and see how this would work. So with these apertures, let's say we're dealing with a focal length of 40 millimeters. So let's take our 20 millimeter aperture size here for example and see what the f-stop number would be for this. Well if we have our 40 millimeter focal length here and we're ending up with a 20 millimeter diameter, that means our f-stop number is obviously going to be 2. So let's put 2 here as our f-stop number. Now we want to go to the next size aperture and get double the amount of light. So we're going to have to multiply our diameter by the square root of 2 to double the amount of light. Well that means, remember, we're going to have to divide our f-stop number by the square root of 2 in order to keep this balanced. So now we have a new f-stop number of 1.4. Now you see, every 
time we go up a number in the f-stop scale, we're dividing our f-stop number by the square root of 2. And every time we go down the scale, we're multiplying our f-stop number by the square root of 2. So even though the f-stop numbers seem kind of random, they're really not. They're just being divided or multiplied by the square root of 2, depending on if you want double the light or half the light. So now let's take a look at the f-stop scale itself. So here's the f-stop scale, and every point on this scale represents double the amount of light compared to the f-stop number below it. And remember, as we multiply the size of the diameter and it gets bigger and bigger, we're dividing the f-stop number and it gets smaller and smaller. So the small f-stop numbers here at the top represent larger apertures, and the larger f-stop numbers here at the bottom represent smaller apertures. The scale still looks confusing though, and I can imagine it'd be hard to remember this sequence of numbers. So I'm going to show you a small trick here that will make this scale easy to remember. Let's start at 1 and look at every other number. We have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Starting to notice the pattern, every time we skip a number, we're doubling the number. And let's start at 1.4. 1.4, 2.8, 5.6, and then rounding, when we double again, we get 11, and then 22, and then 44. See the same pattern. We're just doubling the number every time we skip a number. So as long as you remember these first two numbers, 1 and 1.4, if you only remember these two numbers, you can build out the entire rest of the scale quickly and easily in your head just by skip counting and doubling each time, starting with 1 and 1.4. It makes it a lot easier to remember. Some last bits of information about f-stop. If someone says they're going up a stop or down a stop, that just means they're either going to a larger aperture size or a smaller aperture size. Going up a stop means you're doubling the amount of light. Going down a stop means you're halving the amount of light. If someone says they have a fast lens or a slow lens, that's just referring to the size of the aperture on that lens that it can do. A uh, fast lens can have a wide open aperture, which means you can let in a lot of light. A slow lens will only be able to have a much smaller aperture and let in a lot less light. This means that on a fast lens, your shutter speed can be fast because you're letting in a lot of light all at once. You don't need it open that long. Same with a slow lens, you have a slower shutter speed because you need your shutter open longer in order to let in the right amount of light. Shutter speed is its own topic and I'm going to be covering that in a separate video because it's too big of a topic to cover here. Depth of field is a subject that f-stop plays a crucial role in. Depth of field talks about the area of your photo that's in focus. So for instance, if you have a photo where you need a nice blurry background or you need a landscape photo where you need everything in focus, that's what depth of field covers. And f-stop, as I said, plays a key role. So if you want to understand how to control this, I suggest you watch this video. Then we have lens ratings. And in lens ratings, you'll often see the maximum aperture size listed. So for instance, you might have an 80 millimeter lens with an f4 as its maximum aperture size. Or you might see something like a 55 millimeter to 200 millimeter lens where the focal length can vary between these two. But at this focal length, you might have an aperture size of 4, where at this focal length, you'd have an aperture size of 5.6. This is due to the construction of the lens where it will only allow a certain maximum aperture size at differing focal lengths. Lastly, when we say we have an aperture size of 20 millimeters, we don't mean that the physical iris inside the camera, where we have our lens and our film and the iris here, it doesn't mean that the iris has a physical opening of 20 millimeters. It may be actually much, much smaller than that. What we're talking about is if you were to look at the front of your camera straight into the entrance of your lens, you would see the aperture size looking like it's 20 millimeters. That's what's 20 millimeters, and that's what you're actually calculating with your f-stop, not the physical size itself. I want to mention this because if you happen to actually see the iris in your lens, you would be quite surprised to find that it's much, much smaller, usually, than the aperture size that you're going to find with your f-stop rating. So that's the end of this video. I hope I've answered a lot of questions for you and help you understand what f-stop is and also an easy way to remember the whole f-stop scale. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and thank you for watching.